Here is another quick tip. When you are creating a video, it's really nice if you fade up from black at the beginning over one second and you fade out from black or fade up to black at the end. And that can be done um, if you just with a little bit of foresight in Cartoon Animator. So that gives the audience time to engage that one second from black to scene. It lets them engage with the scene. And then also when you fade out at the end, you're saying I have finished. And it's a way of communicating with your audiences, which is why we use transitions in film and TV and all that sort of stuff. So how do you do it inside of Cartoon Animator? Well, actually, you need to use your SVG editor or your PSD editor, but I would recommend the SVG editor, whatever your SVG editor is. But if you haven't got one elsewhere, you can ask somebody else to do it. It's ever so easy. I'm using actually going to use um, Affinity Designer. All you need to do is file new. And make sure it is uh, 1920 by 1080 if you're exporting at that size. That's fine. Create it. It creates a blank artboard. And then using a rectangle tool, you can just draw a rectangle and make it whatever color you like. Let's say I'm going to make it black and I won't have a stroke. Okay, that's it. And then export it as an SVG. So file, export, choose an SVG. I'm going to export it. I'm going to stick it on my desktop just to show you. I'm going to call it call it a fade and stick it on my desktop, click OK. Right, that's created. That's all I need to do now. If I come to my scene and then I go to my desktop, which is here, here's my desktop. There is the fade, it's an SVG as we know. You can just drag it in, call it as a prop and it's in the scene. Okay, so we don't need to add bones. We can just go straight back to the scene. Choose your fade and then either zoom it or scale it, it really doesn't matter. But as long as you go outside of that box, then you know that it's going to cover the whole screen. Then all you need to do is open up the item. With it selected, select Opacity. It's already got a keyframe. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm going. And I'm going to zoom into 30 frames, which is about there, which is there. And then I'm going to come all the way to the top here and I'm simply going to take that and take it to zero. Okay, and then at the end of my scene, however long that scene is, as long as I've not moved the camera, you might need to re reposition it if you move the camera, but let's say my scene is 500 frames long. I need to add another keyframe, which is at the same value as this one. So just double click or hit V and then go forward another 30 seconds, th sorry, 30 frames, which is about there. I'm doing it roughly here. And then click on opacity again, Go, go forward your 30 frames, which is about, say about there, and then take that back up to 100. Okay, so now it fades in and it fades out. And if you want to, you can even select the keyframe, right click on that, go to its transition curve, and you could sort of do um, decelerate in and accelerate out or whatever you want, or smooth in and smooth out. Um, smooth in and smooth out is a nice way of doing it. But it just gives you that little bit of really smooth time for your audience to start to pay attention. It's starting and I finished. And that's just a way of communicating with your audience, which is really important. So just create something. And, and then if you want to reuse it, go to your content, go to custom. You can see I've actually got them here, but basically you just select the item. So let's go back to the, uh, make sure my scene it's selected. There it is. There's the fade, go to my content and then just save it. So I've, I've created a folder for it. I'll just click save, call it what it is. So I'll call it an HD fade because it is HD 1920 by 1080. Boom. And there it is. There's the HD fade. Now it's taken the whole scene, unfortunately. So if I want to see it, I need to come to this point and then overwrite it. Yeah. Okay. And then you can see it's, it's updated. So the HD fade is actually black. These weren't HD. So that's just a really quick tip on how you can fade in and fade out. The last thing to say is don't do this until the very, very end, because it can get in the way of sorting things out and of, of making things nicer. So when you're finished, when you're happy with everything, drag in your HD fade. It will, by the way, keep the keyframes where they were. So you might need to open up opacity and move them, but then put it in at the beginning, at the end, job done. And of course, there is one other thing that's really helpful about this is if you actually were to go to your scene, and make sure it's selected. If you don't want to fade to black because it's an SVG, you can click the SVG editor here and you can change its color. So I want to fade from green. 
Okay, so I'm going to fade in and fade out from green now. It's all done. Just uh, get rid of that, and then you can see we're fading in and out from green. Why I'd want to fade in and out from green, I've no idea. However, if you ever use green screening and you want to isolate something, that's a useful tip. Somebody rightly pointed out that I hadn't shown you the end result. So the end result is when you're looking at the screen, so bear in mind the blue line is the screen. So that's what you'll actually export. This is what you end up with. Fade in, fades out. So it's just a fade in, fade out. And that's what your viewer will see. That's what uh, you're actually outputting. I hope this is useful.